On January 11, 1981, I reported for my first day of work as a game programmer at Atari and changed my life forever. Back then, Atari was everywhere, and if you didn't have the games yourself, you probably hung out with someone who did. Atari was a truly amazing place to work and an amazing story. So I got my friends together because we're the only ones who can tell you this story. We were there. So here it is, for the first time ever, the real story of the beginning of the industry and the phenomenon of video games. And it's called Once Upon Atari. Welcome to Once Upon Atari. I'm Howard Scott Warshaw and I was a game engineer at Atari. We made the term video game both a household word and the top of every Christmas list. Atari games changed our culture, but the impact it had on those of us who made those games was far greater. Once Upon Atari shares these deeply personal experiences with you. In this episode, we'll explore the environment in which those games were made. It was a workplace none of us had ever imagined before, and regrettably, have never experienced since. Atari was a really crazy place. You had to look where you were going because otherwise you might be hit by a flying lemon. People were playing bocce lemons in the hallway. Um, there were constantly pranks going on. The day we flew the frog. The sprinkler lobotomy. My first or second day there, I saw all these men coming out of the women's bathroom. <laughs> I thought this was kind of odd. And I found out that there was a little lounge room that was off the main bathroom where they would all get in there to get stoned. <laughs> and um, that was Atari. It was all sort of started by Nolan Bushnell, who was the founder, and he kind of instilled this, uh, you know, family friendly feeling, uh, parties every Friday, um, but you had to get your job done, otherwise, you didn't hang around too long. An environment with little discipline, uh, but yet with clearly stated goals. Um, and in general, that's a, in conflict with a corporate form. So I felt that one of the things that had to happen was that the true sources of the creative thought almost had to be disconnected a little bit from the corpus. It wasn't run like a business in that, in that, in that building and nobody really wanted it to be run like a business. It was a real shock for people who came into Atari Remember, uh, I had a new boss come in named George Kish, and uh, seemed like a pretty straight-laced guy and everything. And he comes in to manage a group of game developers, and uh, I think the first several weeks he didn't know what hit him. Uh, what I expected was a company. What I expected was a business. What I got was um, a very unique environment with a bunch of individuals. Uh, the um, who did not respond well at many times to um, management did not want to respond to other management, did not um, wanted to just march, you know, their own way. Atari was the first place that I worked at where there was such strong individual contribution to the products that were being made and that people had a lot more control and say in what they were doing. So I basically have never had a boss. Uh, I've never had anybody tell me, Rob, do it this way, or Rob, this is what you should do. 